thank you very much. Thank you very much to Jellyfish, and we're very fortunate enough to have Leonard Cohen with us. You've uh, just played two nights at the Albert Hall. That's right. Was that good? Well, very, very, uh, yeah, it was good. You're an unusual thing in uh, music in that you are a genuine poet and a uh, songwriter. What was the first thing that influenced you? Was it literature or was it music? Country music. Uh, I used to listen to this radio station, uh, Wheeling Wheeling, West Virginia. Uh, you know, under the covers, when your parents couldn't hear you, we could get those uh, stations late at night, those country stations. What sort of artists would you listen to? You oh, mean? Merle Haggard, Hank Snow, Roy Acuff, uh, all the old country mm -hmm. stars. And then what got you into the poetry? Well, I don't know. I thought that was the way to kind of win women's hearts. Did it work? Yes, it did. <laughs> hmm. I must try that. You must, yes. Um, did you... Now, you ha you've written many, you've written two very successful novels, and I think eight volumes of poetry. Something like that, yeah. But you haven't written anything, any books for a, for a long time. Well, I just uh, have a book coming out called Stranger Music, which is an anthology of a whole lot of stuff, you know, going from the age of 15 to 58, mm -hmm. kind of compilation. Do you veer into the Roy Acuff and Hank Snow and those people? Well, I strive to achieve their simplicity and uh, sincerity of thought. That is, is that what is the job of a poet? Is, it, is that the? I search me. That's yeah. It's good to know. <laughs> now I think we've got a clip of you uh, in 1967 that neither of us have, have seen yet um, with Julie Felix in 1967. Perhaps we could have no a. No kidding. Hang on. I loved you in the morning. Our kisses deep and warm. Your hair upon the pillow like a sleepy golden storm. Yes. Many love before us, I know that we are not new in the city and in forests. They smile like me and you, but let's not talk of love or change, things we can't untie. Your eyes are soft with sorrow. Do, do, do you, have you seen that recently? No, I haven't. I, I never saw it. You know, I, I remember the evening. Uh, it was the first television show that, that I ever did in England, and one of the first that I ever did anywhere. And Julie Felix invited me over to do it. So I have never seen that clip. That must be interesting. You were saying your chops. What, when, what did you mean? I have like two or one or two things I can. You know, you know, there's an expression of chops. Yeah. The musicians have to designate their excellence, their skill. And you say, like, a musician has great chops. Well, I have one chop. So, uh, you know, I, I'm demonstrating my chop there. Beautifully demonstrated there. Beautifully demonstrated. That's Did the only one I got. Now, you've, you've lived, it's a bit of, but you, you only need one beautiful chop, surely, yeah, and then lots yeah. of poetry. That's and, right, that's yeah. right. It, yeah. it served me well. Yeah. Um, you've lived all over the world as well, I believe. You even lived in London. I think at the Albert Hall you were talking about when you lived in London. Well, I, I lived in London, and uh, 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 my delightful landlady was at the uh, concert last night. Her name is Stella Pullman, and she gave me a, a couch in her sitting room when I first got to London in 59. And she said, uh, uh, you know, what are you supposed to be here for? I said, a writer. She said, if you write your three pages a day, you can stay. So she supervised tyrannically the production of those three pages. and. Uh, it's not very interesting, but... Well, was it, uh, no, it was to me. Is it good? Was it good well, what you well, wrote? Were you uh, pleased uh, with what you wrote? It's not what I wrote. It was that Stella mm -hmm. Pullman had this wonderful and nourishing influence and uh, trained me to be a disciplined worker. Well, what did she do? She, she, she said she was going to throw me out in the street if I didn't do those three pages Oh, well, that's day. good. There you are, you see. What's the place you like living in most of all? You lived in Greece as well, I believe. I, I lived in Greece for many years in Montreal. Yeah. Uh, I love Montreal and I love... Uh, Los Angeles. Is America a good place for poets? Is it welcome poets? Uh, Los Angeles is a terrific place to live, you know, uh, mm -hmm. because, uh, well, it's, it's right on the edge of destruction. Mm 
Mm. You know, the ground itself is trembling. Yeah. You know, the landscape is about to blow apart. You yeah. know, the the social fabric is about to tear. And uh, uh, many novelists have documented the fragmentation of the psyche. Yeah. So it's a place right at the edge of things where everything is about to fall apart. And it's a very uh, nourishing place for that reason. But now most. If, it, if you were an estate agent and you said all those things, they think, well, that's not a good place to live. But you like that about a place. I like that about that place, yeah. Are you an optimistic person, do you think, kind of thing? Well, you know, I, I think uh, those descriptions are kind of obsolete these mm -hmm. days, you know. Uh, you know, everybody's kind of hanging on to their broken orange crate in the flood. Mm -hmm. And when you pass someone else, you know, to declare yourself an optimist or a pessimist or pro-abortion or against abortion or a conservative or a liberal, you know, these descriptions are obsolete in the yeah. face of the catastrophe that everybody's really dealing with. I think all we can say is that we, we, you're going to do about 60 shows now or something, is that That's right? That's right, yeah. Enormous world tour. We just all wish you much luck on your world tour. And we hope that Los Angeles stays safe for you, for your Thank return. Thank you so much. Leonard Kurt, Thanks ladies and gentlemen.